Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Bless you. Please be seated. Thank you all for being here this morning. Praise the Lord. Spring break never ends for some. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. I just wanted to mention too, uh, Yvette, is it next week or the following week that we're... The following week. A week from... Two weeks from yesterday. Is that right? Okay. Two weeks from yesterday. So you all got time to bring your stuff in. And if you want to do it next Sunday, we're, we're basically putting everything in that back Sunday school room. And uh, then that following Saturday, we'll get it out and everybody can, whoever wants. So if you've got anything that uh, you're not using, you just keep moving around every winter, spring, summer, fall when you're changing clothes, uh, bring it on in. Somebody will get some good out of it. Amen. Somebody will. I mean, I got stuff that's, God only knows, 25, 30 years old, I expect. But I still wear some of it, to be quite honest with you. But, uh, yes, you bet. Praise the Lord. Got my attention right off there. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, by all means. And uh, pick up some flyers on your way out and... It, if you don't have some specific place you can put them, you can just hand them out to some people you know or friends or somebody that you think may have a use for it or know somebody who does and we'll get the word out. And can I say one more thing? Please. I don't know if it's relevant or not, but I've been bringing old purses and shoes that I've never worn and things like that. And I don't Right, right. Sure. Ladies need their pocketbooks and handbags and whatever else they call them. Praise the Lord. So bring it if you got it, and somebody will certainly be blessed as a result of it. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Most of you know that I'm a real computer uh, nerd. <laughs> well, it was listening for thunder. But uh, I did discover that, you know, well, all things were in Christ before the foundation of the world, so computers already existed. We just didn't know it, right? right. Had to just manifest. So the first computer actually dates all the way back to Adam and Eve. A little research, will, you'll discover the same thing. It was an apple uh, with it's an apple with limited memory, just one bite, and then everything crashed. Praise the Lord! Glory to God! And all of the stuff that pertained to computers, I don't even know what I said. I don't have any idea, I, but I can parrot it. Praise the Lord! Anyway, today I want to talk, I'm going to talk to you about some things that uh, have really been on my heart personally, and of course, so you end up getting what I'm dealing with, but uh, I suspect there's others that are going through the same thing and have been going through it. So I'm not, I'm not being negative, but yet at the same time, sometimes just stuff just keeps piling up and piling up in the world, in the natural, and I talked about it a little bit last week in terms of distractions and getting you off of your base, you know, uh, in Christ. And when that happens, you know, you feel alien. You just feel kind of isolated. You feel like you're all by yourself. You know, you can't really, you know what I mean? And, uh, of course, that forces you into a conversation with the Lord, which is a good thing. But uh, I want to talk to you about some things that I think everybody experiences and how we deal with it going forward. Because my guess is in these last days, there's just going to be more and more of this kind of pressure on the people of God. Uh, to maintain that faith, that confidence in God in spite of what everything else looks like. Amen? And that's really what this is all about. So we need to be reminded sometimes that uh, faith is what makes us work. Yes. Yes. Amen? And so with the thought of all this, I mean, you know, we all have losses, and uh, sometimes it's, it's through death, sometimes it's through... Uh, loss of a job or maybe a job that's just dysfunctional but you're stuck with it you know and um, other issues that maybe you've prayed about and but haven't seen the answer yet and you uh, you know the enemy comes and tells you well you know if God was going to do something he would have done it by now you know surely he would he knows you've got a problem you need to be dealt this needs to be dealt with and so on and so forth so the enemy tries to use all that but <clears throat> in the case of just dying alone I'm thinking you know first of all smoking will kill you Bacon will kill you, right? right? But if you smoke bacon, it'll cure it. <laughs> you, 
just, just use it against the enemy. When he tries to come against you and take advantage of you, why, well, just turn the tables on him. Praise the Lord. So just here's, a, here's an op, uh, just something to think about uh, in the future. And, and this is really for Sally, but hopefully for everybody. <clears throat> I hope that if I choke to death on gummy bears, people just say, I was killed by bears and leave it at that. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. <sighs> Everybody wants to be thought of as more than they really were, right? So, the bears got him. <laughs> praise the Lord. But I was thinking uh, just a couple of things to kind of preempt what I want to talk to you about this morning, and that is that anger, anger that's turned inward creates depression. But anger that's turned sideways is faith. Praise the Lord. In other words, if, it come, if you meditate on it, if you focus on it, if you dwell on it, you'll get depressed. Believe me, it'll happen. Just whatever the situation, the circumstance, whatever it is, if it's got you down and you just start meditating on it, start mulling it over all the time and thinking about that one thing, it'll, you, you'll be depressed. But if you turn it sideways, in other words, if you turn the situation in an awkward position, in other words, don't let it dominate you, you turn it sideways and that's what faith really is. It takes whatever that situation is and gets it off center yeah. so that now you can actually have some control or some power over the situation or the circumstance. Amen? And we hear a lot about, and I'm talking about some of this today, patience. So we know that faith, if you let your anger or your frustration turn in, it becomes depression. If you take your faith, you turn that thing sideways, and it becomes faith. Patience, on the other hand, is simply this. It's being consistent no matter what the circumstances are. That's true patience. Patience isn't just sitting back and going... I'm just not going to let this bother me, because the more you say that, the more it's probably going to be bothering you. True patience is just consistency, amen, no matter what the circumstance is. You do the same things no matter what the situation looks like. You don't let the situation dictate to you. You dictate to the situation or to the circumstance, amen? Okay, so with that in mind, let's begin with Job chapter 11, uh, verses 7 through 9. That ought to be a indication of where we're going here right off the bat with Job. Whoa, only me and Job. <laughs> so, the troubles I've seen. Praise the Lord. Job 11, 7 and 9, he says, Cast, Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It's as high as a heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell. What canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. Longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Praise the Lord. The same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also other, uh, with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Praise the Lord. So, uh, the last few weeks I've been you know, kind of looking for answers for myself. and uh, Sally will tell you that, uh, and, I, and I know it aggravates her, but that's my job. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, uh, but I kind of withdraw when when there's stuff happening and a lot of junk going on and negative things, I don't withdraw in the sense that I just curl up in a ball and quit, but I don't communicate a lot. Right. 
I'm trying to keep from saying stuff that I know is going through my head, but I don't want to confess and I don't want it to be what dominates my thinking. And so a lot of times rather than say something, because you know in the heat of expression, stuff will come out that you don't really want coming out or that you know you know it's there it's rattling around but you just don't want it to be dominating the thing so that's kind of what happens with me so this this story uh, spoke to me and I think the Lord was speaking to me through it anyway and the story actually is a disturbing and yet it's a fascinating story at the same time I think we, we read it we've read it so many times we just kind of take it for granted and think you know what are these cowards why are they acting like idiots you know well, they had good reason to. They were. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's a, the truth is, take it for what it actually is saying to us. It's a dramatic life and death story yes. involving Jesus, the disciples, a boat, and what was meant to be this smooth, safe journey across the Sea of Galilee. Just a nice, pleasant yeah. sail across the Sea of Galilee. But this frightening, this near-death experience began with Jesus saying, let's get to the other side of the lake. Yes. Get in the boat, we're going to the other side, right? So in other words, Jesus initiates this trip. Yeah. This life and death episode is the result of Jesus uh -huh. saying, let's go. Yeah. Amen? In other words, Jesus initiates this trip, this life and death episode is because of Jesus. That's why the story is so disturbing. Because it, at its core, it contradicts so much of what we want to believe about faith in God. Now, I'm just being honest with you this morning, and I'm not throwing in the towel. I haven't given up. I'm not saying that anything I've said in the past isn't true. I'm just saying this is reality because we all deal with it, and you know it as well as I do, so we might as well confront it, right? We try to figure out God and make absolute sense of faith. Yeah. We're humans. That's what we do. We want to know everything. We want to understand everything. We leave absolutely no room for mystery. And because of that, we can't make sense out of the doubt and the confusion and the questions that come whenever we stop, step out in faith and things aren't coming out the way we thought they should. Right? right? Because after all, we are in faith. We want God to fit neatly into our compartments. We want Him to fit into our categories, into our boxes, in order for us to fully understand and maybe even manipulate Him. I mean, if we know enough about Him, right? You, you know how it is. You get to knowing people. You know how to push their buttons. You know how to get what it is you got to get or do what you got to do. To You know, that's, that's human as well. Well, I really don't want more formulaic how-to's. Amen? I don't want more three-step programs from some self-professing religious guru, amen, who hasn't lived as long as I have or been through even the, some of the stuff that I've been through, right? right. And, and, of course, that's true for you. Doubt is not the enemy of faith. That's not puberty either. It's, I've, I've got a little bit of a congestion thing going on here. <clears throat> <clears throat> And mystery shouldn't be feared. Right, right, true. Right. Even doubt and mystery, just like the strong, you know, these fierce winds on the lake and the chaotic sea, has to submit to Christ. Yes. No matter what it is you're going through and experiencing, it has to submit yes. to Jesus. Yes. Amen? So in this near-death sea story, most of these disciples were fishermen. They were professional fishermen. That's what they did for a living. That's what their daddy did. That, they knew. That's what they had grown up doing. Amen. They fished the Sea of Galilee hundreds, if not thousands of times. They were experts. And the truth is, they would have never set sail if they knew the danger that was coming. They would have never gotten the boat. They would have never raised the sail. They would have never pushed off from shore. And this is our lives, isn't it? Yeah. Our hearts, our minds, our goals, and we try to understand the mysteries of life. We try to comprehend and analyze the depth and the profoundness of God. Yeah. Why did He do that? Why didn't He do this? 
How come this happened? How was this able to take place? We try to understand the mysteries of life. We try to comprehend and analyze the depth and the profoundness of God. Yeah. I'm repeating myself because that's what we do in every situation. And I hear it from people all the time. They're not just saying, I believe, therefore I will. No, I want to know why. Why, if God's saying do this, then why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why did this happen? We want control of our lives. We want control of our circumstances. And we want control of the world around us. Until we realize that no matter how much experience we have, we never have full control of our life or the sea. Praise the Lord. Or am I encouraging you this morning? Praise <laughs> Now, I'm just talking truth, okay? Praise the Lord. Look at John chapter 16 and verse 33. This is my uh, catharsis, if you will. This is how I deal with it. I'm Because I'm, I don't have answers. My emotions, my attitudes, my experiences will dominate if I let them. Yes. So you've got to go back to the Word of God. You've got to go back and say, okay, God, here's my deal. Work with me. Yeah. All right, because he knows already. I don't. It's not like I'm springing something on him. He knows me inside out. Right. Praise the Lord. So these things ha I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In me, you'll have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation. Yes. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are in Christ. Yeah. If that remains our focus... We'll have peace even in tribulation. We will have tribulation. There's no question about it. We know it. We've all lived long enough to know you're going to get tribulation. You're not going to get it in the past just because you're a Christian. You're not going to escape every single thing that happens in the world. Right. There will be tribulation. But in Him, mm -hmm. there's peace in spite of the tribulation. Yes. See, the real hope of the gospel is not bliss and perfection, but that God is with mm -hmm. us. In every circumstance, in every situation. Yes. Praise the Lord. God is present, even and especially in our doubts, yes. in our pain, in our mess. Yes. Ever have, through some tragedy or some lost loved one or whatever it might be, a financial thing or whatever, where God shows up bigger than he's ever been before. Yes. In, in, all the, in all the confusion, in the pain, in the questioning, and yet... God is there. He's present. See, the disciples, they feared for their lives. They even wondered, and they, they openly questioned how Jesus could be sleeping in this circumstance. What are you, how can you do this? We're dying out here. But Jesus never promised a quick, easy, straight, without issues journey. He never promised a smooth sailor, uh, you know, in a decked out yacht. He does promise one thing. Let's get to the other side. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to cross the lake. We're going to get to our destination. Matthew 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, this is Jesus. Amen? One with the Father. But every bit man. And here's what he says. Gives me, makes me feel better. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Anybody ever feel like that? This is our Savior talking. You don't have to be ashamed or afraid because you don't understand everything that's happening. You just got to trust. Yes. Look at verse 50 and 51. Jesus, then, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. From the top to the bottom, the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. So, 
Jesus promises to get us to the destination, to get us to the other side of the lake. Mess, doubts, pain, tension, all of it to the other side of the lake. I'm looking at adults here. I'd like to say middle-aged. But I won't, praise the Lord. Life is messy. Ding! That came as a revelation, didn't it? Life is messy. God is mysterious. Hallelujah. That is the awkward reality that we live in every single day. And yet we expect that walking by faith should be easier, should be neater, should be relatively free of hassles. Right? You know, Joseph, his entire life was challenges, challenges, accusations, uh, failures, looking seemingly failures. And then God shows up. Then there's another mess. Then God shows up. Then there's another mess. These are not messes that lasted 30 seconds or 45 minutes or a month. They went on all of his life. And here's how he summarizes this long, drawn-out, painful, sometimes anguishing, sometimes no doubt questioning, wondering why, Lord, you said everybody's going to bow, that I'm going to be a representation, and here I am in prison. For some, I didn't do anything. Yeah. Right? I did the right thing, and here I am. And then things just escalate, and a little breakthrough here, and then something else would happen. And it looked like, hey, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it turns out to be the train. And it's another issue, and another five years of, uh, of everything be seemingly pushed off and put back, and, and, and waiting and waiting and waiting and expecting that somehow, some way, this is going to take place. But look at Genesis chapter 50. And verse 20, and this is how Joseph deals with a whole lifetime of this struggle, of this believing and trusting and, and maintaining what God had promised him in the face of all of this negativity. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Praise the Lord. In the evil of life, God manifests. He doesn't, he doesn't wipe out all the evil. He just shows up in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. That's what Joseph learned. God is always with me. No matter what you're doing, no matter what the world is trying to do, no matter what their motive, no matter what their agenda, God is with me. Praise the Lord. Now, look at, let's look at this. Job chapter 42 Verses 1 through 5. Job 42, 1 through 5. What I'm saying is the things that we experience as human beings are not unique to us. Jesus experienced it. We saw it. My God, my God. Yeah. At, at the height of the pressure and the, and the, the strain of believing and trusting and maintaining his faith in what he knew God was planning on doing and what God was going to do. And yet, even the Christ is dealing with human emotions and realities. Where are you? I can't see you. And looks, it doesn't look like you're involved in this at all. It looks like I just missed it. And Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Praise the Lord. So Job is humbled. He's recognizing a God that all of a sudden is bigger, grander, mm -hmm. wiser, beyond all of his own questions, 
beyond all of his frustrations, he sees there's a God that's bigger than all of this mess that I've been worrying about. Amen. It's the resurrection and the new covenant that charts this radically new course and opens up a new chapter to following everything that went before us. Praise the Lord. These people didn't have the Holy Spirit except that it would move on them. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, no temptation has come on you that is not common to man. Mm -hmm. From the garden all the way up to the present. Mm -hmm. Every Christian questions sometimes, wonders, feels disconnect, feels powerless. Look at Psalms 126, verses 1 through 6. And sometimes we, we just walk around pretending like nothing ever phases me. Question never comes. <sighs> established. But you can be established and still have doubts. Because life slaps you right smack in the face with the death of a loved one or somebody, some other situation you've been praying about, but it doesn't come out the way you prayed. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. It's all about faith. Israel's in the desert, and they're being led by God. Now, think about it. It was God, not the people's immediate feelings or needs, that dictated their course. Because if it had been just about the people's immediate needs, he could have taken them on a path that was a two-day journey instead of a 40-year one. But this was about God, not the people. When they walked during the day, God used a cloud to lead Israel by night and, of course, a pillar of fire by day. Or the cloud by day, I should say, and the pillar of fire by night. Whenever the cloud or the fire stopped, the people stopped and set up the tabernacle. When the cloud or the fire moved, they moved. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something, a rhetorical question here. Isn't that the epitome of living by faith? Mm -hmm. Trouble is, we're like Israel a lot of times. We get up and move before the cloud does and then wonder why we're in the mess we're in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two things we learned from this. First, God leads. And second, somehow, and in some way, his leading is going to be visible enough for us to have confidence in it. I mean, it's going to be real enough to achieve. We all know this. He tells you to pray for healing or, or to do a certain thing about your finances or whatever. It, it's invisible, and yet it's, it's real enough to get you to do it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. So it's, it's real enough so that we can have confidence in it, even if we don't have certainty about it. Right. We want certainty. You can have confidence without certainty, especially if it's God that you're dealing with. Right. Amen. Deuteronomy 4, uh, verse 29 through 31. See, they, had, they developed a confidence in the cloud or the pillar Confident enough to follow what they could see, even though they didn't know where it was taking them. Right. God wasn't as interested about them learning about where they were going as whether they would go. Yep, yep. Right. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days... If thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is merciful God. He will not forsake thee, 
neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you really walk by faith, you're going to have a sense of the bigness of God, but not always a knowledge about where he's going exactly. or where he's taking you. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Here's what God said to me. As I'm feeling sorry for myself. But being a good Christian and confessing all the right stuff. But I was depressed. I mean, I'm feeling, come on. How many more people are going to die? How many before we see the... You understand what I'm saying? Here's what God said to me, though. Life is too precious to waste any season of it. People get to be a certain age and a lot, they just throw up their hands and say, well, we'll just wait to die. Let's make the funeral arrangements and then we'll just... And here's what God told me. Whatever season you're in, it's too precious. Right? It's just too valuable, amen, to just let it go. To not experience it. Life, amen, is wasted if you just give up on it. And it can happen in any season of your life. Where you feel overwhelmed and you just think, man, how is this ever going to, what's going to happen? How's it going to work out? And God's saying, live it. That's what I gave it to you for. Live the life. Enjoy. Whatever season you're in, whatever you're going through, live. Enjoy. Don't let the experience, don't let that moment dictate life to you. Hosea 6 and 3. I mean, I've known people who had some horrible experiences early in life and just urinated the rest of their life away. Yeah. It was too much. They just couldn't handle it for whatever reason and just said, that's it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And the rest of their life went downhill from there. And that's what God's saying. Don't. Life is too precious. Yeah. To waste any season of it. Even, even a negative thing. Sometimes, you know, we just want to act like it didn't happen. Just kind of block it all off. And, and God's saying, even this. You need to embrace God in the midst of whatever this thing is that you're going through. Whatever your struggle is. Amen. Don't waste your life feeling bad about everything when God is right there with you all the time. Yes. Yeah. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, His going forth is prepared as the morning, and He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain, under the earth. Praise the Lord. So I go back and take a little trip down memory lane. Don't get me wrong, I'm not so depressed that I'm sitting in my room crying. I'm, li I'm doing it, I'm cutting down trees, I'm doing all this stuff, that I, but it's, it's just there haunting you, you know what I'm saying? Every time you turn... Don and I were talking a little bit. You know, your brother comes up three, four times a day. If you, maybe more than that. My brother, same way. Parents, you know, to others. And, and you just, you know, the first thought is always why. And, you know, and then just stay busy, keep busy, you know, do whatever. But it doesn't go away. No. And I'm just saying, we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, as the former rain under the earth. Praise the Lord. From Abraham and his roundabout travels, God said, go there, and he went there, and then he went about a dozen other places in the process, yeah. right? To Moses in the desert. Yeah. What am I doing out here? Lord, if you forsake me. If it's you, Lord, you know, all this kind of stuff. To David in a, in a cave, hiding for his own life, mm -hmm. running away from the guy who claimed to be the leader, appointed of God. John the Baptist in prison. Think about your situations, and I'm just saying. It's not unique. Mary being visited in a dream about an unconsummated pregnancy. Talk about pressure, stress, fear, anxiety, 
uncertainty at the very best. Jesus, in this lonely garden, where his closest friends wouldn't even set up with him, wouldn't even right. interact with him to help him through this. Nobody understood the torment that he was going through. Right. Sometimes it feels that way. Nobody gets it. Yeah. It's as though the calling of God or his movement in the lives of his people often goes hand in hand with sleepless nights, with questions, with lies. This life of faith is at times moving our feet when we don't know where. Sure. Doing when we don't know how. Mm -hmm. And hoping when we don't know why. Yeah. Abraham hoped against hope. Mm -hmm. And that church, the Lord told me, is authentic spirituality. You look at it and you say, that's not the end of it. That's not the truth of it. That's not the, that's not the end all and be all of it. That's just the flesh of it. That's just the natural of it. Exactly. Again, John 16, 33. See, we've been, I think in some cases, suckered into believing that Real spirituality, authentic spirituality, is a life without any worries, without any problems, without any situations, without any circumstances. But show me somebody in the Bible that experienced that. It's just not there. True spirituality is in the face of all the crap that's hitting the fan, and you're still standing. Yes. Not that you don't doubt, not that you don't question, not that you're not fearful, but you're just saying, this will not move me. I'm gonna, God said it. He's going to do I'm go, I'm going to keep on keeping on. I don't know where I'm keeping on to. I don't know where the final destination may be. But I know that I'm guaranteed I will get to that destination. Yes. I will reach the other shore because he said, come on, Nathan, let's go. When I got born again, he said, I got a purpose for you. I've got a plan for you. I've got a path for you. I've got a journey for you. And we're going to get to the end of this journey no matter what it looks like on the trail, on the path, on the way. Amen. It may look like we're never going to get there. But I guarantee you, if I called you, we're going to the other side. We're going to get to where I have called you to. Praise the Lord. Your destiny shall be fulfilled. Amen. In Jesus. Praise the Lord. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. If you're in me, I've overcome the tribulation. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. What did we say patience was? Consistency regardless of what the circumstances are. Even in tribulations, knowing that tribulation works patience, consistency. It, 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 it develops consistency regardless of what's going on. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. This is the joy we have in God. He is a God come near. 
He's not a distant, far-off God on some planet out in space somewhere. He's a God that's right here with me in the heat of the junk, of the battle, of the experiences, of the circumstances. He's right here with me in all of it. So our, that's why our joy can extend beyond our right now situation because it doesn't define us. Yeah, it's happening. It's, it's going on. But this isn't my end. This isn't the, the ultimate goal of God for me. This just happens to be something I'm going through, amen, in this world. It's a tribulation, praise the Lord. Our, our wandering and our searching has resolution. Yes. Amen. If you keep looking, you'll keep finding. Yes. Amen. There was a time when I had no idea that God would heal somebody. Just because we prayed for it. Or because that was His will for somebody. I just thought, that's life. People have it. They get it. They die. They get sick. They get whatever. And then God shows up and says, no, that's not what I want. It's not the way I want it. That's not the way I intended it. That's not how it is in heaven. Amen. So our, our wandering, our searching after God, amen, brings resolution. It actually brings the answers that we're seeking for. And that's why He gives us the pillar of cloud mm -hmm. by day and the fire by night. That's why He gives us His Holy Spirit or His presence to lead us and to guide us. Yes. Amen. C.S. Lewis called, called this uh, living in the shadow lands. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The lands, he called it, the lands on the edge of heaven that are less real, less solid, and less permanent than heaven itself. Wow. It's called yes. faith. Yeah, it That's the land we live in. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 16. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. And we talk about the world and the politics. And this is the answer. They don't have the Spirit of God. There's no way they can understand anything that we're talking about. It's why we're t it, it, you, you can't even have an argument. You can't even have a debate with somebody who believes the idiocy of some of what's believed. That a child in a mother's womb, that there's no sanctity of life for that. Even to the point where now it's even after it's born, it can be murdered. And yet, Don and I were talking, and yet uh, they'll burn down buildings, beat people up for eating chicken. Right? I mean, remember the, the, the uh, what do they call it? The... Uh, yeah, Peter, but I'm talking about the, uh, the set-ins, the, the, all the junk that went on with Chick-fil-A. Not because of chicken, because they're Christian. Mm -hmm. Chicken just was the thing that they could use, that Peter used, and that everybody, other liberal, uh, you know. And I'm not just saying all liberals are horrible people, they're all sinners and everything. I'm just saying their, their agenda is about saving all the animals, all the whales, all the uh, dolphins, and killing the humans. Yeah. Now, c come on. 
you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that something is backwards and upside down here. The, the reasoning, the logic escapes me completely. I mean, it's just, how can you argue that? How can you say, I love animals. I'm not, a, I'm not interested in killing all the animals except what I eat. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Right? But to equate the two, yeah. you can take human life, but you can't take animal life. Yeah. There is no connection to reality. But it also tells us that there's something in us, this Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the anointing of God, the knowledge of God, the awareness of God, that even though we struggle with our own circumstances and situations, some things just can't be changed. You, there's not an argument that you could argue that's going to convince me that it's okay to kill people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No matter if they're, a, you know, three weeks in the mother's womb or three years on the street after their birth yeah. or 30 years or eight. It's just not right. Now, I don't, Sally, she wanted me to kill a squirrel this morning. It's my wife. <laughs> now, we're leaving the house. We're going down the road. And because uh, we live in the country, you know, there's roadkill everywhere. You see it all the time. So I'm, ca I'm cautious. You know, I don't want to kill animals. There's plenty of dead ones all over the place. So we come around the curve to come to the first stop sign from where we live. And I slow way down. She goes, she's looking over here, which she always is, you know, to tell me about what may be coming from Colfax <laughs> 10 miles away. Watch out. I think there's a truck leaving the truck stop over there right now. Keep an eye out. So anyway, she's looking over here, and I'm looking in front because that's where I'm driving. And the squirrels stand, and I know that they're just like deer. If they're standing by the side of the road, the closer you get to them, the more likely they are to run out in front of you. There's just something insane about animals. They just do that. Yeah. You think, well, surely... Because I'm a human, if I'm standing there seeing this big vehicle coming at me, I'm going to get down in the ditch or go the opposite. No, that isn't what they do. They wait till you're right there, and then they run out in front of you. Yep. So, so I'm, slow, I'm slowing way down because I know that's what the squirrel's going to do. And she's going, what, 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 what? I said, what, nothing. She said, what's going on? Where are you slowing down? I said, look in front instead of over there, and you'll know why I'm slowing down. There's a squirrel out here in front of me. Oh, you scared me. I said, well, honey, let me run that squirrel down and kill him. You'll feel a lot better. You won't be near as upset. I can find that squirrel again. I'll splatter him all over the road, and then you'll feel good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I have no idea why I even went down that road, except I wanted to humiliate my wife. Because it's my job. Praise the Lord. But that is a true story. Anyway. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Yes. So here's the deal. We want all the answers. And when I talk to people about faith or believing for this or confessing that or whatever, and you get the reasons why it won't work, right? And I understand that because, hey, I get the same thoughts. It just I'm just not going to meditate on those thoughts. They just got to go. I'll replace them with what God has said and move on from there. Because an intellectual gospel is always in danger of creating a God that's just like us. Yes. Now, if you want God to be like you, then you just keep doing things your way. Yeah. Yeah. We end up with a God that looks like us, that acts like us, that thinks like us. A God that's our size. I, I need a God that's bigger than me. I need a God that knows more than I know. I need a God that's not, uh, you know, intimidated by the circumstances or the situation. Exactly. Exactly. See, the, the, the very quest for answers sometimes leads to a rejection of the mystery. God is mysterious. He is a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery, this mystery of eight from the ages past. And the problem is when we think that we have to have all the answers, we end up rejecting the mystery itself. Yeah. Yeah. The result then is mystery is often treated as something intolerable. Something you can't put up with. Something you can't handle. Something you can't deal with. Instead of being a real treasure. Because this mystery we believe in, the people we're talking about that are coming against, they don't believe it. Yeah. 
They have no... In fact, we look like complete idiots to them to believe it. Absolutely. They're convinced that we are morons, that we are sociopathic idiots, you know, and need to be wiped off. The, that'll be the next thing. Colossians 1, uh, 21 through 27. I don't like this. I, I don't like not knowing. Get used to it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and re unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. So living with mystery is the privilege of our walk of faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. It is. Are you with me? Yes. I know Jesus, but he's pretty mysterious. I can know him. I can know what his mod modus operandi. I can understand how he operates, how he works, but I'll never be able to figure it all out in this life. Exactly. We have this treasure in a mystery. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Are you with me? If you can deal with the mystery, yeah. you can find the treasure. Mm -hmm. You can experience the inheritance. You can experience yes. healing and deliverance, the treasure which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. See, the importance of it, it, it can't be overstated. If I understand everything that's going on in my Christian life, I have an inferior Christian life. True. I'm serious. See, we're, we want to know everything. But the truth is, if we're going to walk by faith, if we're going to operate by the Spirit, we're not going to know everything before we get to the destination. Absolutely. Otherwise, it wouldn't be faith. Exactly. Praise the Lord. The walk of faith is to live according to the revelation that we have received in the midst of mysteries we cannot explain. Right. Yes. Amen? In other words, I'm praying for the sick in spite of the fact that people I prayed for died. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen some that I prayed for survive. Yes. Amen. I'm going to do what he says to do in the midst of the mystery, in the midst of, well, I don't know, I don't have an answer for why it doesn't happen every time. Right. I will have one day, but in the meantime, I got to still walk by faith. I got to keep doing what he says to do, whether it happens every time or once in uh, 10 times or whatever it is, I still have to live by faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's why Christianity is called the faith. Uh -huh. If it isn't about faith, then it's just a religion. And you might as well be Muslim or Hindu or anything else. Right. It happens all the time. Believers abandon or, or dilute their call in order to feel better about the things that they can't explain. Well, I'm <laughs> it may sound kind of odd, but that's the truth. I deal with it all the time. Yeah. They'll dumb their faith down. They'll dilute it down. They'll, they'll, they'll try to make it simpler or whatever. Amen. So that they can feel better about the things that they don't have answers for. True. Two people, you know, it's just too often we only obey what we understand. Praise the Lord. And that subjects God to our judgment. Yes. Think about it. God's not on trial. People talk to me a lot like he is. Yeah. 
Well, if that's the truth, then why? Then, that, hey, <laughs> you know, I got the same genetics you got. Yeah. I got questions too. But the questions won't resolve the truth. The truth is, I got to believe God in this mystery. I got to believe what He has said, even though it's kind of mysterious about how it's going to happen. The mystery goes with it. It goes with the treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That's the mystery. The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. To only believe when we see there's going to be a favorable outcome is not faith. When some people find themselves in a place of uncertainty with, without answers for their problems, they change their view of God. Uh -huh. Instead of changing their thinking or their actions, they just dumb God down to something less. Uh -huh. Uncertainty challenges faith. It's a, it's a powerful act of spiritual warfare to stand in the middle of death, disease, conflict, unresolved issues. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what he's called us to. Mm -hmm. yes. That's faith. That's spiritual warfare. It isn't just wrestling around with a demon on the floor. That demon comes against us, and the way we wrestle with him, and the way we overcome him is by the word of our testimony yes. and by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Yes. Doesn't mean thoughts won't come. Doesn't mean... Anxieties won't show up and pop up and issues will happen, yes. But you stand, yes. therefore. When you've done all to stand, stand, therefore. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me, let me read this to you. This really spoke to me. C.S. Lewis, uh, you all know he's written multiple books. I've probably got six or eight of them at least. But he wrote a poem. It's called Addison's Walk. And the poem is based on the hope of a breakthrough. And it's actually, it, it's subtitled, What the Bird Said Early in the Year. It's Addison's Walk. And here's the poem. I heard in Addison's Walk a bird sing clear. This year the summer will come true. This year. This year, winds will not strip the blossoms from the apple trees this year, nor want of rain destroy the peas. This year, time's nature will no more defeat you, nor all the promised moments in their passing cheat you. This time, they will not lead you round and back to autumn one year older by the well-worn track. This year, this year, as all the flowers foretell, we shall escape the circle and undo the spell. Often deceived, yet open once again your heart. Quick, 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 quick. The gates are drawn apart. Praise the Lord. Mark 4, 39 through 41. Mark 4, 39. Through 41. We'll wrap up here. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And we arrive on the other side. Yes. Amen. Our destination is the promises of God. Amen. Don't stop walking by faith. We shall escape the circle and open our hearts once again. The gates are drawn apart. Mm -hmm. The veil is rent. The mystery opened. Christ in us. More than conquerors.
always victorious. Yes. In Jesus' name, and everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's a fight. But the only fight we've got is a fight of faith. We don't have to beat the devil up. We just got to stand in faith and he's already defeated. Absolutely. Amen. In Jesus name. Go in the power of his might. Keep the faith. Keep on fighting everybody. There's a destination. Amen. And we shall arrive. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus name. Have a great week. God bless you all. Hope to see you back here next Sunday.